back on this, so now what we gotta do, uh, the easiest way to get these pumps on, instead of trying to fight around this uh, inner timing cover, is we just pull the uh, cam pulleys off on, on the driver's side. So we're gonna take our little impact here, 17. Zip these off. These, bolt, these bolts can be a real pisser too, just so you know. If you don't have a little impact to get in there, <clears throat> you can be pretty snug. They should be labeled and keyweighed. Let's see. Yep, so, you know, left side intake. Don't drop them, they're plastic. They, they break pretty easy. That's left side exhaust, so, top and bottom. Then once you have those off, there's just three bolts. 10 millimeter. Just be able to buzz those out. Take this, uh, oh shoot, that's right, we got a dipstick, oil dipstick. Take the bolt up out of that. Usually you gotta pull the whole dipstick out if I remember right, but. <clears throat> Maybe we can get ourselves just enough room here. Or we'll wiggle right up out of there. Okay. So, yeah, just take your oil dipstick. That'll wiggle right up out of the block. I think that'll give us enough room to get this out. Otherwise, you're fighting this this side gasket here. It just makes the job a whole lot easier. You have to, I mean, you can get it. If you don't want to go through that, you can get the water pump in there, but it's kind of a pain in the neck. I wish, wish I could show this <clears throat> a little bit better, but I can't. So we're just going to stick our gasket on there. Gonna get a couple bolts. Get a couple bolts started on that. And we'll come down. <clears throat> Slide my bypass hose on there. Get this thing lined up. around a little bit because you've got that <clears throat> that little rubber piece in between the pump and the oil pump housing so that can be a little tricky like if you're just got to fight with that instead of the whole plastic timing cover it makes it a whole lot easier now that we got it all started let's just lightly snug them up Supposed to be 89 to 124 inch pounds is the spec. I say use your mind. 124 inch pounds is going to be pretty stout on there. I've got the uh, torque wrench set for 120 just to feel. These are these are pretty tiny bolts. So if 124, yeah, I feel that's about as hard as you'd want to take them. So we'll just go around and make sure these are all snugged up. We'll do, we'll do the 120, 124 inch pounds. You know, pulling on a 12 inch handle, it's quite a bit of torque on a little six millimeter bolt. We got her. Yep. There. I'm happy if you are.
rubber piece that goes up here. Almost forgot. Let's see if we can get this nested back in there. Whoa! That wasn't me, that was Josh. Yeah, oh, come on. This thing can be a little tricky because you got that water pipe back there. in on that. Of course the camera's right in my way. You'll see when you're doing it, if you're doing one. Line her up just so, get the cam sensor pushed through there. If you get it wrong, it'll get all these rubbers all wadded up on you, so just kind of take your time. Don't force it. And there you go, you'll get her slid right in there. This one takes that shouldered bolt, so that bolt was shouldered. <clears throat> the other two bolts are gonna be nice and flat. So we'll get those started. Now's a good time if the cam seals are leaking. You're not gonna be any closer than you are right now. These ones are nice and dry. So you know what I say, leave it alone. If it ain't broke, right? But if it's your own car, and you just want to go full gorilla and change everything, then now's the time to do your cam seals. We'll get our oil dipstick here lined back up. Maybe. on it if they weren't all covered with oil make sure you lube them up and then you gotta kind of just wiggle around you'll get it to feed right down in there you just reach right underneath there you'll feel where it's there we go yep pops right in and you've got the bolt there that holds that on yeah I find it just a whole lot easier to pull that Pull that inner cover off so you don't have to fight with it. You don't have to worry about your water pump gasket getting goofed up. None of that business. gear plier set. So we're going to put our timing gears back on. Uh, it's basically, you know, it's just a big giant pair of channel locks. It's got different teeth you install. Hold it on your cam gear. Torque that down. This is kind of a universal one. That's what I'll use for torquing on uh, cam sprockets. Subaru does make a special tool for these. It goes on the inner portion. There's a giant you know, like a big giant nut in there you hold as a through socket and then you can just work those on. Or you can just go all zippy zap with the impact, whatever, whatever your method is there. Um, put your cam sprockets back on. We'll hose everything off with a little brake cleaner. Bet you never thought you'd hear me say that. And then we'll put it all together. Don't lose your paint markers. Good. Got everything all paint marker, but it's gonna get rid of some of the slime and crap that's in here. It's also a good time to change your uh, front seal. If you have evidence of the crank seal leaking. Or it's also a good time to change your timing belt if you haven't done that yet. Good time to do a lot of things while you're here. All right, so what we're gonna have to do now, we'll take our tensioner, it's got the grenade pin in it, don't pull it, it's tempting. We're going to put that back in. I'm just going to tighten that up lightly. Because that is slotted, so you can, uh, it gives a little bit of 
a little bit of movement and we'll want all we can get when we're putting this belt on so that is slotted a little bit there. Then, let her inside that. We'll take our tensioner pulley. We'll get that little guy put back up there. And that one we can snug right up. If you can't, if you can hang out of the socket, you can. Because that'll move regardless of how tight it is there. Go ahead and tighten that up to the factory specs. And then we've got our cogged pulley. That goes on. And we'll tighten that up to factory specs also. So now we're ready to put the timing belt on. So the cams on this side, at least this one here, is going to be under tension. It's like right on the verge of explosion. You touch it, it flips, you get mad. That's how it is. And now we've got to get this one where it needs to be. We're just going to spin these over. Everything. Got our little dots lined up. Like I say, this side's right on the verge of explosion. We're going to come over here. We're going to do the same thing. On this side, we've got all the all the slack, so so make sure you have your marks where they need to be. You know, you don't want to invert any of your marks you put on there. I don't think you really can. Just pay attention. Well, I'll do the best. I'll do the best that I can here. These can be a little bit tricky. You're gonna to want to go wash your mitts. You don't want to get grease and crap all over this. <coughs> Pull out our little drain bucket there. Oh God. Disaster zone. Alright, so we got that out of the way. Still all over. We'll find our crank mark. Whatever the funner that is, we got that. I'm gonna stick that up on the crank. And I'm just gonna start working my way around. And just about the time you get it, the whole mess will come all on you. Hopefully not. Like I say, if you're working with a factory timing belt <coughs> or a new one, you're going to see these marks on it. And the little mirror, the little flashlight, usually an extra hand is helpful doing this, but it's not always an option either. Alright. Another marks there. Marks. Let's see if we got it. We're going to kind of leave our slack over here on this side. This is a pretty difficult job to record, so I apologize for not being able to see everything, but I actually I have to have my face all up in here to do it right and that's kind of what's important. Get a wrench. Skip a tooth on this one down here. Get it lined up. I think we're good. So I'm just holding tension up where we took that pulley out. I look back in there, make sure my timing mark is on with my paint mark. That one's obvious on. This one's obviously on. This one's good. Our cam to cam marks are good. Same thing over here on the driver's side. I can see down there in my mirror, I can see my paint mark is lined up perfectly with, uh, with our one that we made there. Our cam to cam marks are good. So meow. What we have to do 
So we'll take our idler pulley and we'll get her lined up here. Make sure this bolt starts straight. Don't, don't get down here with some air tools and get all hog wild on this thing. And that's it. That's how you put a time belt on a twin cam Subaru. It's kind of difficult to, to record, but after, after I get this uh, tightened down to the factory specification, I'll show you a trick. All right, so we got that torqued. Yeah, so now what I'm gonna do, before I show you any little tricks, I just reach down here behind the tensioner. You see how it's kind of slotted? I don't know why, there's nothing in the service manual about it, but I guess it's always been my habit to just push it forward a little bit. And then I come down at that point and snug it up. If I have the right size socket, there we go. I don't know what the real process is on that, or if there even is one, because like I say, it's not in the uh, service, not in the factory service manual anyways. I just shove it ahead a little bit and that's it. I don't know if they slot it because there's different configurations that it's used on or what the real deal is. Snug it up, get a pair of pliers. And we can pull our grenade pin. They come out kind of kind of tricky. Oh, I tell you, it comes out tricky and the thing slips right out. Sometimes they can be kind of stinker. And probably somebody's gonna go nuts because I pushed in the tensioner on a, on a vise. You know, by the book, you're supposed to do it in a vertical press with a gauge on it, never exceeds 66 pounds and all that hoopla, but who has all that stuff in their shop? I don't, so I do them in the press. So I'll show you my method, and uh, it seems seems to work pretty good for me. I can slip one of these belts on pretty quick. Um, I, th I don't know what it says if you read the book, I'll be honest with you. It probably has an order to go, but here, here's the order I use. I usually, I'll throw my belt up on the crank, hold that, get it under the tensioner. At that point, I usually come up around here on, on the slack side of the belt, because you're not worried about where, where you're leaving the slack, because you're actually doing a tooth count. You know, there's a certain amount of teeth between here and here, in between here and here and you know obviously you know here and here so theoretically if you have your tooth count all right you're gonna end up with your slack over here that's just that's just the way it is because if you have your tooth count from your crank on your tension side of the belt up to your intake cam on the passenger side it's gonna be tight that's just that's just how it works <laughs> so anyhow what I was getting at is I start on the crank I come over I do uh, the intake on the driver's side, and I drop down to the exhaust. And you got to notice on these pulleys, your exhaust has a flange on it on the outside of the pulley, so you can't just you know slip a belt over. If that makes sense, then I thread it up around the water pump, the cog pulley. Obviously, this one's gone. And at that point, I come over and I do this side because this one has a flange on it. So your intake on your passenger side, I'll throw the belt up on there, and then the last pulley I put on is the exhaust passenger side. That one doesn't have a flange on it. You can slip your belt right over it. If you're off a tooth, all you simply do is take a wrench, stick a wrench on here. There's there's enough slack here. You can kind of, uh, you know, move it whichever way you have to. Get your mark to line up. You know, rotate it. Uh, you know, stick your wrench on here, pull it up, get all your tension over here, and then you can put your idler on. Does that make sense? I, I hope it does. Sometimes I just do these things and I, I don't think about it because I've done a, you know, enough of them to it's not giving it any thought, but that's kind of the process. I guess long story short is whatever way you go, you want to make sure the last pulley you put on is either smooth uh, or does not have any, any lip flange on it because you'll never get it up over that flange. So that's how I do them. It usually zips them together pretty quick, but you can see all of our marks are lined back up where they should be. Everybody's happy. So at this point, if you wanted to see if your car ran, you could. Uh, just take and you know, knock your crank bowl back out of there, stick your pulley on there and fire it up. Of course, there's no water in it, so you don't want it to run very long. Uh, you know, like, you know, just want to stir it up just to hear it. Be satisfied, then you go ahead and do that. 
I'm pretty confident with what we did, so I'm just going to go ahead and slap the covers back on it. The other thing you can do too at this point, um, if you want to, you know, double check yourself, uh, or, if you, or if you doubt yourself or anything like that, you can take and rotate the engine over a couple times by hand, uh, making sure that you know you're going in a clockwise direction to keep the slack on on the right side of the belt. Then you can realign your marks. Uh, now, uh, just keep in mind if you're doing that, the marks on your belt will not realign with where they are right now. Your paint marks will constantly advance all the way around. Eventually, they'll come back and line up. So, if you do decide to rotate this engine over, you're just going to be lining up your physical marks, not your not the marks that are on the belt. If that makes sense. Hopefully, it does. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm pretty confident in it. So we're just going to slap the covers on it. We're going to throw the thermostat back in it. Drop three years back in and uh, put our belts back on. We should be good to go. Now that you got the timing cover on, it's the time to question yourself. I forget to tighten that fill in the blank. We've all been there, pal. If you don't know, take the cover back off. It's the only advice I can give you. So we're pretty much just down to the nuts and bolts part of it. We'll put our tensioners back on there. Get our belts on, get them tensioned up. Of course, put your crank pulley back on. Get that torque down. It's all pretty, pretty much run of the mill stuff from here out. The hard part is over. Stick our belts back on there the way they were. So everybody's happy. It's all about happiness. I'm happy, you're happy, customer's happy. You happy, Hannah? Yep. You're happy, good. See, everybody's happy. We can grab belt tension gauge. There's that. So Miss Hannah can grab the gauges here. On this one belt, we'll use our Kent Moore belt tension gauge. If I can squeeze it in weak here. Dead on the money. Now, we were going to use a different style tension gauge on this one because of limited access. Tricky little guy. Make sure it stays in the groove, especially on the crank. Set our tension here about 80 pounds. Ooh, I'm that. I'm about 100 there. I used belt, I said about 80 pounds. New belts, around 100, I think. It's a little too loose. threshold you can cross, you know. Oops. Oh man, this one's broke. Let's see what we got here. Oh my gosh. That is 50, 60, 75, 78, somewhere right in there. Check it again. Yep, right on the money, baby. I just have to pull back a previous statement. Wow, don't start your engine. This is the first time I've ever pulled a radiator work on one of these. <laughs> if you start your engine, you're gonna have a big puddle of red stuff on the floor, assuming it's an automatic. I forgot all about that. I forgot we even pulled the radiator out to do this job. 
So it's always my habit to leave it in. Right so don't start it until you hook the cool lines back up for your transmission. There. Whew. Pull that hose back. <clears throat> we'll set our radiator back in here. Got a couple uh, rubber mounts that sits to in the bottom. Just feel that slip right in. I'm thinking. We're gonna be the next hour trying to put the radiator in. <clears throat> Yep, that sure beats messing with the fans on this model. <clears throat> we'll get our uh, get our brackets put back on, and then oh, I'm getting tired. And when is it done? Got about 15 minutes to finish this up. Guys, gonna be here to get it. Uh, we'll just get that hooked up. Get our hoses hooked up. Put the fans back in. Get our mounts back on. Get it full of coolant. Bleed it out, and ship it. So we'll use our smart funnel. Spill free funnel, whatever you want to call it. Oh man, I got a bug in there. A little moth. All petrified, dried up. Oh, I that great here. So these can be, these take forever to fill. Um, you hand me the antifreeze in. So what you have to do, we have to take this plug out over here on the uh, passenger side of the radiator <clears throat> to fill these up. They have a jiggle pin or the thermostat that we use has a jiggle pin in it. So it'll let the air escape up through the block, but it just takes a while, and people get in a hurry with these things. And they start them up prematurely, and then they overheat, all that bad stuff. So we'll let this burp and gurgle along. We'll pull this out until coolant comes out over here on the pasture side. It takes a little fire, we'll pull that out. And then somebody in the comments will say, how come you don't use your air vac system? Or do you have an air lift system? I do. And I usually use that on like really troublesome vehicles. And I don't usually have a problem with Subaru, so that's why I don't use my air vac system. I have shown that in other videos, though, just for sake of demonstration. Careful, it's got a little o-ring on it, you don't want to lose that. But if you're using one of these spill-free funnels, it will have enough height difference in the fluid level. It'll, it'll come blazing right out of here, so you got to kind of be careful about that. So stick that back in, I'll dump some more coolant in it. If you are using your spill-free funnel and it's sitting there blurping along, that's a good sign because that usually means you have no leaks. But if you put coolant in it and it just goes right to the bottom, you're usually in big trouble. So you probably can't hear it on the video, but there's actually air coming right up out of here. And our coolant in the uh, spill-free funnel is going down rapidly. So I'll just kind of keep this here and we'll We'll cheese the right level and we'll be good to go. Yep, and when you get coolant, start squirting out of there. That's it, she's full. There's no air in the system. Just snug that up, but don't be, don't be going caveman on that thing. Just plastic. And we'll plug off our funnel. Oops. So we'll put our reservoir. So that's full. Put the rest of it back in our jug. And that's it. I'm gonna spill a little bit right here. There's a little bit left in this neck. That's full right to the top. I'll wash that off, don't worry. Big moment of truth, Mark the old rock and knock and Subaru.
it. Not much to it. Uh, you know, pretty much nuts and bolts stuff. <laughs> so you can see how to do the timing belt, or perhaps you couldn't. Try to do the best I could with that. But it's really difficult, honestly, to get the camera in there, and because really to do the timing belt on these, you need all your digits down in there, and you're just kind of around the front and just doing it. It's really difficult to get in there with the camera and show that. So hope you kind of followed along. Um, they're really not not that difficult to do. You just leave that one lower pulley off, and you know just kind of pay attention to where you're going. You know, watch the pulleys that have the flanges on it because you're gonna you know you can't put your belt up on one of those last. And I think that's pretty pretty self-explanatory, and and you can kind of see how to how to do these. Um, and I think that's that's about it. There's really not not much to them. They're not a ton different than the regular single red cams. Um, I think I've shown that in a video, like perhaps in my head gasket video, it shows how to throw the timing belt on one of those. Uh, so I'll put a put a link there for that too. I guess the only difference is you got two extra cams, right? You know, so a couple extra marks. So just pay attention to your marks. Use the marks on the belts and everything will go good and everybody will be happy. So thanks for watching. Um, check us out on Facebook and Google Plus if you haven't done that yet already. I ask that you subscribe to our channel if you want to stay up to date with all the stuff we roll out almost weekly if we can, if time allows here at the shop. We do have some good stuff coming up here pretty soon. Got some real cool case studies coming out, I think. So stay tuned for those and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.